Rob here from Way Out West. Last week I had a chat with Duncan and Johnny T to learn a little about what to expect at this coming Sunday's gig. The band's name is Twigs and they will be presenting the music of the Allman Brothers. Twigs are a seven piece band, including two drummers. If you don't know where the name Twigs comes from, tune into this video and you'll find out, just as I did. So please, hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. I'm only one subscriber away from the Magic 100. Hope to see you at the gig, and as always, rock on my friends. <laughs> That's just the hard bit. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, God. Oh, um, thanks for joining us, guys. I've got a little bit I'll go through, but I've got a YouTube channel and I tr uh, try and interview all the artists coming up, just put it up for a bit of promo. And so I'm really, in fact, this is the first night one I've done. So I'm not, I'm nearly 70, mate. I'm nearly in bed this time of the night. Yeah, same. <laughs> I, I, actually sent, I actually sent uh, Johnny a message like, hey, can we move this forward a bit? Because I'm pretty tired for last night. I was up late watching the new Alien movie and stuff. Oh, so. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my daughter said that the scene it said she's pretty scary. Yeah, yeah, that's no, pretty good though. I don't know if you're into the alien movies, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. really um it's a a good tip of the hat to all the, the previous ones. A lot of yeah. a lot of little Easter eggs in there. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well I might um start if it's all right. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to welcome uh Duncan and uh Johnny T. Thanks for joining me and having the chat. Thank you, mate. And we're gonna uh about this fabulous gig coming up at way out west sunday the 15th and it's titled trouble no more the music of the allman brothers band and i'm so looking forward to uh, seeing it can i'll start with you duncan can you tell us how, what inspired you to create the show around the allman brothers uh i've always been a pretty big fan of the allman brothers let's say for about the last 15 years or so um i used to live in london and um i put a band together there um which was mostly original music, but um, we did a few covers and I got this really excellent guitarist to join me. His name was Jules Fothergill. Um, if you look him up, he's uh, was an excellent guitarist in the UK. Unfortunately, he passed away though. Um, just a little bit older than me, which is a very, very sad occasion, a big loss to the music world, the blues, blues community in, in the UK. But he was a huge Allman Brothers fan and he kind of, got me really switched on to them and we did a few covers in our set um, we did like blue sky and memory of elizabeth reed and um yeah and then once you start going down that rabbit hole with the allman brothers it's a, a very deep hole indeed and um yeah just loved them ever since you know from from the original version you know with like Dwayne and dickie on guitars and stuff all the way through to um warren haynes and Derek trucks and all the different iterations along the way it's just um yeah, like Dan, yeah, so many guitarists. I mean, we can get into that later, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead. Then, then coming here, but then coming over here to Australia, um, same as in the UK, they're just not as well known. Like, a few people know a few of the songs, you know, like maybe, um, like Whipping Post and Rambling Man and mm. Jessica, obviously, from Top Gear and all that. Um, so I just thought, oh, well, I've got to find some people who might be keen to play this stuff and how much fun is it and like having two drummers and two guitars and it's just uh, it's just a good time and like and when people suddenly get switched onto it like basically just trying to spread the gospel of the, the Allman Brothers you know a lot of people have heard of like Leonard Skinner and Grateful Dead but Allman Brothers I think are in a, in a league of their own they're like they tend to get thrown in the same pot but I always think that yeah Allmans are kind of a bit separate to all of that so I agree mate and Johnny T can you tell us Who's in the band and, and, and what are the backgrounds of the other players? Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> we've got Duncan. Duncan, of course, who's um, who's put the Ormond brand, uh, the Ormond uh, uh, band together, the Ormond Brothers band together. Um, we've got Craig Kelly on bass, who um, is really well known around Melbourne and he plays in lots of, lots of projects. We've got um, Glenn Ford on guitar, on the other guitar, which um, he's got his own thing going as well. Um, he plays around a lot. Um, we've got Joel Smithard on keyboards. Um, Joel does a whole heap of things as well. Um, we all do heaps of things. 
Um, and then we've got um, Jeff Conti on the other on the other drum kit, and myself. And oh, and actually, oh, of course, who could I forget? Paul Slattery on vocals, lead vocals. Yes. Oh, I was going to so say, mate. I don't really need to say much more about that. He's, he's he's been away out west about five times this year, I oh, mate. He's he's just about to become become the president of the club. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, so oh, back to you, Duncan. How uh -huh. deep do you dive into the the catalogue of the Allman Brothers, and and do you stay? In, you have sort of answered it, but you do you stay in that classic period of say nineteen sixty nine to nineteen seventy six. Yeah, fundamentally, mostly we do. Um, yeah, like a lot of the stuff from the Fillmore, the Fillmore recordings and the original recordings, um, the, the Allman Brothers, Ottawa, South. Yeah, it's pretty much the early, early era stuff that we that we're covering at the moment. Um, I mean, obviously, quite a few well known songs that that not so familiar people will enjoy, but then also quite a few like deep cuts that um, Hard and Allman Brothers fans will enjoy. Or people that haven't heard the tunes before will also just kind of be switched on to. There's some pretty other incredible instrumentals that we're throwing in there. Um, yeah, just uh, but yeah, pretty much the early the early period. I'd you, say. you mentioned uh, just briefly. I heard you say there about Fillmore. Uh, yeah. They used to do a return to the Fillmore what every year, didn't they? They just kept going back. Uh, no, they did, but then the film or the I think the Beacon Theatre was like the 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 place that became the one that um they went back to every year. That's I don't true. know what happened to the film. The film was closed, isn't it? Yeah, I the think. film was closed, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the Beacon Theatre was the one that they, they tend to come back to the most. But yeah. um yeah. I'll um throw this open to both of you. So I I had a dream come true in twenty twenty three. We went down and visited Muscle Shoals and oh, I yeah. And uh, we went in there and I had a photo taken with the cutout of Joanne Orman, a life-size cutout. My, I, I said to my wife, I have to have this photo taken. She thought I was mad. Um, but can you tell me, for those that don't know who Joanne Orman is, um, why is he so revered in the music industry? Because it wasn't just the Orman brothers, was it? No, no. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer this one, I guess. Um, yeah, he was a pretty huge session musician in his time. Also did a lot of work with, um, who was it, King Curtis and uh, Isley Brothers. What was it? They did some with the Isley Brothers, Aretha Franklin. I've got a, I've got a vinyl that I picked up at the at the, a vinyl um, show, which is just basically like Dwayne Orman, not in the Orman Brothers. But um, yeah, and I mean, to achieve everything he achieved up until he died, which he was 24 when he died, you know, most, mm. most 27 is like the, the general age for, for young legends to go. He was at 24 and he achieved so much. I mean, with the Orman brothers, all that session work that he did. Um, and also, yeah, being on the Layla album with Clapton. I mean, he, that was a huge album and he was a huge contributor to it. Um, yeah. And just such an untimely death and such a powerhouse person. And like apparently just, uh, really kept was the driving force in that band um, convinced the band to to hire his brother greg because greg wasn't in the band initially and um yeah he got greg to come in and audition and they heard that voice and it was pretty much the deal was sealed have you uh either of you got a uh, copy of the sky dog six album um box that that that's got everything he's ever done pretty much if you can find that somewhere on on eBay or something that's really worth because it's got a great book with it too about him. Oh well, well thanks for making like that, Rob. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Check it out. Yeah. The other one, the, the the record I've got is I think the Dwayne Allman anthology part two. Yeah, but I've got to find part one somewhere. I'll yeah, keep, yeah. I'll keep, I'll keep digging. Um, and let's go back to uh, Johnny T. And we uh, Duncan mentioned it briefly there. We acknowledge how good the uh, the brothers Allman were to the band, but. The guys like Dickie Betts and Butch Trucks, they brought so much to the band as well, didn't they, mate? Oh, look, they did. I mean, look, I've I've always loved the Allman Brothers and I grew up, you know, um, with them and listening to them. Um, and, you know, like till about a year ago um, when Duncan contacted me and said, look, I want to start a Norman Brothers band. Do you want to be it? I went, oh, okay, you know. And um, and I didn't realise how, how involved it was. Yeah. Um, it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to sit down and learn because uh, we play the songs pretty much as they are. 
Um, and um, it's just given me so much more respect for the band. Like I had so much respect for the band anyway, but now it's like even more respect for the band because they were well ahead of their time, you know, and, um, you know, the way I look at it, like they're like one of the, the first prog rock fusion bands of the seventies, yeah. you know, you could easily say that, you know? And um, so, yeah, that's, um, you know, like, and every, every member, you know, brings something, you know, like with the two drummers and, and, you know, apparently they just, they just got on really well and, and it just worked, you yeah. know? So. Um, yeah, it yeah. worked all right. It certainly worked. And uh, because they also got into quite some extended jams. Do you guys do that as well? Or do you just stay, you know, I've heard this, do it the whipping post this way, or do you sort of on the day say, okay, let's go somewhere else? Um, well, it's yeah, sorry, yeah. No, you go, Johnny, you go. Yeah. All right. Well, it's the sort of, um, we're in the sort of um, early stages of it. We're just sort of, you know, getting all the songs and learning them together as a band. I mean, um, Duncan's, you know, got into them a bit more than everybody else, but um, we're just sort of learning all the songs as a band and as they are, you know, and, um, it's quite interesting. Everyone thinks that the Orman Brothers are a jam band. And, um, well, you know, they are. But there's specific bits that you have to know. So, yes, they do jam in between there. Yeah. But there's there, it's it's all worked out. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not everyone thinks it's so easy, but it's not. You know, so um, it's, 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 it's really interesting, you know. Like maybe when they were when they were together for a long time and they're touring here, yeah, they might put in an extra lay break or something. Yeah. Yes. But you know, um, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it's a very interesting thing, you know, no, there's yeah. definitely, definitely bits where they like can extend the parts out, but there's like kind of like a telepathic communication of like, all right, buddy. And the solo, we're going into the, the next little bit and then it's going to go like 90 degrees from here and all that. So yeah, as a band, we're still working towards that. But um, yeah, we still have the solos and all that kind of thing. It's just like a lot of head nodding and yeah. kind of communication and just like, yeah, no, it's coming next, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you talked uh, briefly before, Duncan, about some of the, the other people that um, uh, Joanne had played with. There's a guy that is one of my favourites, Ronnie Hawkins, who we started off with Ronnie Hawkins and the Hawks and that they went on to become the band. But he he does a version of Down in the Alley. And I think Dwayne Orman plays on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard it or not, but it's just sensational. Uh, yeah, because yeah, Ronnie Hawkins goes way back to the late 50s, early 60s. Um, so he was sort of an older statesman of that style of music. So yeah, um, you should check that out. Ronnie Hawkins and the Hawks before they went on to become the band. And really the Orman brothers were doing Americana before it was even Americana, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Now, Actually, I, I remember um seeing a, an interview with Eric Clapton and he was asked, oh, what's um, who's your favorite guitarist? And he said, Dwayne Orman. Mm -hmm. You know, so um I mean what is that? I mean, you know. Yeah. So some of our listeners too, we uh, it was mentioned before that Dwayne uh, died tragically at twenty four. It wasn't anything of drugs and that but he did he had a, a very bad motorcycle accident if i'm correct in saying yeah. That. Yeah. yeah and then and then like a year later um very oakley the bass just died mm. almost in the same spot in the yeah. same way yeah. it's, just it's incredible isn't it yeah, it's the band a band fought with uh tragedy but like still managed to pull through and um and and change their sound so much i mean mm. you know after Dwayne left then it was uh or was it the, I think it was the Brothers and Sisters album that came out. Yep. Um, and that was pretty much Dickie Betts doing everything. And I think they played with Dickie Betts just as the only guitarist. And they they got, um, what's the name of the guy? Lonnie, Lonnie, someone on the keys that um, kind of filled in. But yeah, just the way they kept moving on from there. And I think they took a bit of a break from then. And then, um, then Dickie Betts did some solo stuff and then they came back with uh, Dan Tola, Dangerous mm -hmm. Dan Tola was the other guitarist that came in who was also mm -hmm. excellent, complete, not very well known, but like you dig deep and see some of the live performances. I mean, this guy has this huge mop of hair, but like playing that Les Paul like a machine is just mm -hmm. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then who was after that? Then Dan Tola left and then I think that's when, when Warren Haynes must have come in, I guess. Yeah, Warren Haynes, he, he's incredible too because he... That government government mule, uh, they do all sorts of music. Just amazing that guitar. Yeah, yeah, so good, so good. That's a great band. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, it's just 
amazing. And of course, Derek Trucks sat in with the band for a while as well. So yeah, he, yeah. he brought a different sound again to the band. Yeah, and another guy that not many people have heard of, there's two other guys that were in between before Derek Trucks joined was um, Jack Pearson um, from Nashville. And if you know much of Jack Pearson's music, oh. but he's probably one of the best guitarists in the world out there at the moment. I really recommend you check him out. Blues, jazz, whatever, slide guitar, Jack Pearson. <coughs> He, he played with Dick when uh, Warren left to create uh, Government Mule. He took Warren's place and played with Dickie for a while, but then had to leave. He didn't stay with him for very long because he had suffered bad tinnitus or whatever. Then he uh, left. Yeah. And then um, then is Jimmy Herring from Widespread Panic. He yeah. was also part of the band for about six months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he was with Derek Trucks yeah. after... No, what happened? Yeah, I think... Dicky Betts got kicked out. Derek Trucks came in. Yeah. That's also a really sad story that old Dicky Betts got kicked out of his own band, but like yeah. you know, for bad, bad yeah. behavior or whatever. But um, yeah. And then uh, Derek and Jimmy, Jimmy Herring left and him and Derek Trucks had a side side project called Frog Wings, which is pretty interesting. Him and O'Teal Burbridge, mm -hmm. the basis of the Warman Brothers, very funk fusion-y kind of stuff. If you ever find it called Frog Wings, it's insane. But mm -hmm. um yeah, and then Jimmy Herring left and Warren Haynes came back and then, yeah, him and Derek Trucks until the end of the Warman Brothers. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and we only just recently lost Dickie Betts, I think he... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that's right. Earlier yeah. this year, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he made uh, it to me. And, and see, so, you know, we've got the the Allman Brothers, uh, you know, it's, you know, it was Greg and Joanne to start with. Were you guys okay with the band continuing... Uh, and, and continuing to evolve, or you think, oh, they should have just stayed, you know, 69 to 76? Oh, no, definitely carry on. I mean, the stuff that came out after, which is excellent, and, like, they, they always threw back to the old tunes. I mean, the, there was there was always a tip of the hat to the to the original mm -hmm. um, lineup. I mean, I think everybody in that band, all the guitarists particularly, were very influenced by Dwayne Norman. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, why not, you know, keep it going? Yeah. I mean, look definitely. at the great and yeah. guys, what have, have either of you two seen um, the Allman Betts band play? No, but no. I know of them, and I yeah. yeah, and they were here just not so long ago, That's and I correct. wish I could have seen them, but I was uh, I was uh, working, so yeah, I would have loved to see that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I missed I missed that one unfortunately <laughs> also, but um, yeah, since putting this band together, I've kind of had my ear to the ground for what other kind of Allman tribute acts there are around the world. And there's another one that's uh, called uh, Trouble No More. So we actually go under the name Twigs. Yeah. Um, Twigs was actually the the band manager of the Ormonds in the early days. If you look on the back of the Ardawad South L um, LP, it says Four Twigs. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's what I call the band. It's a cool yeah. name. Yeah. So um, that guy. Twigs kind of Linden. Linden. Yeah. Is yeah. And, he, and he had a pretty crazy story himself. You know, he like apparently was mad drug addict and alcoholic, and even stabbed, like killed a. A venue manager for not paying the band but got off for a plea of insanity or something i don't know <laughs> ended up dying in a skydiving accident or something oh, um but uh yeah where was i going with this oh yeah there's another band in the states um Allman brothers tribute band called trouble no more and they've got daniel donato who's like a really young and up-and-coming country guitar player um and uh tol wilkenfeld on the bass you know tol wilkenfeld she's the oh, australian oh, cool. yeah the one that played with Jeff Beck, yeah, she's yes, in yes, that yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she she plays in that band too. So it's um a really amazing band. Um, yeah. also playing Allman Brothers tunes. So it's all out there. Like there's a lot going on. And I heard just the other day in Sydney there was a bit of a, an um I think it was for Jerry Fest or uh, yeah. for Dead Saturday or whatever it's called. But um, yeah, Jeff Edgerson and some guys in Sydney did a few Allman Brothers tunes. Um, mm. so there's, <clears throat> there's stuff happening. Yeah, yeah, so it should. Yeah, I, I was lucky to see the Allman Betts brothers play in New Orleans a couple yeah. of times. So, um, wow, that would have been great. At Jazz Fest, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're not just playing off their old man's names. They're just incredible musicians in their own right. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, that's about all I had. Um, we're so looking forward to it. Um, when, we, uh, yeah, when I say uh, Sunday the 5th, the 15th from 2 p.m. So yeah. much looking forward to it. And you'll be, so, uh, there's a lot of people. I've, I've got to thank Rosemary Marsham. For yeah, she's <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're my uh, 
eyes and ears, uh, uh, Rosemary and John. Yeah. Uh, they came back from seeing you guys. I think it, uh, I'm not sure where now. And so it was you George book, Lane. That's yeah. it, George Lane. You've got to book these guys. You've got to book these guys. <laughs> oh, and another side, who did the poster? I really dig that poster. That's taken me right back to me hippie days. Guilty. That's yeah. Duncan. Duncan yeah. did that. It's great. That looks, it looks cool, mate. Yeah, well, uh, do you have projectors and stuff at Way Out West? Because I've even got a full, like, light, like, you know, the, um, the, the oils and all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, doesn't well, doesn't need to. I mean, during the day, you're probably not going to see it very well. Yeah, anymore. that'll be the issue. But, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, what issue. about merch? You, uh, that'll look good on a T-shirt, I reckon that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I kind of lifted it off the internet somewhere and did like some photoshopping and all that. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure how that would go down in terms of like licensing and stuff. Oh, and yeah, we man. drew that picture in the first place. But yeah, no, it's, uh, it came came together pretty well. Yeah. Pretty yeah, I was at um, this weekend on Sunday. I went to go watch the the Chris Kane uh, gig yeah. at Nemo and ran into quite a few people there, like, and, and they were talking about where I was. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm playing there in like a, in a few weeks. So I'm doing this all brother. I'm like, oh, we're going to that. So I was like, sweet. Like, I think I spoke to about like eight people and all of them were going. So I was like, oh, that's awesome. So I, uh, I, I, I uh, whenever I'm booking gigs for Way Out West, I try and look in uh, other people's calendars. And when I seen Chris Kane was coming out, I thought I can't do a Way Out West gig because all my Way Out West people will be at Chris Kane gig. So yeah, oh, it, was so, said, no. it was so good though. I'm also yeah. like a, a recent Chris Kane convert. Like, yeah. oh my God, that guy can play wow yeah. and sing and everything. Yeah. And he's an amazing sax player and an amazing piano player apparently. So and um, did he have Bill Barber open for him? Yeah, yeah. yes, Bill yeah, man, it. I love him too. He's he's coming later in the year as well. So uh, oh, he was so good. He was so yeah. good. Yeah. Fantastic. Apparently, he does a really good version of Whipping Post in his set too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, yeah, we mentioned him before. Jeff Atchison always, well, quite often puts Whipping Post into his uh, into his set as well. So, yeah, mm. fantastic. All right, thanks, Duncan. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, we'll see Thank you, you, Rob. Just over a week's time, and yeah, taking the time out, I really appreciate it. Thank well, you. Thanks, for, no, thanks for thanks for booking us. I mean,